All right, welcome back to another episode of Regular Wanna Play Through of Factions. <laughs> I'm just sitting get faster and faster with Santa. Uh, today's gonna be a pretty relaxed, chill, stress-free episode. Uh, I finished all of factions. Actually, you know what? I can do one more thing. That person is farming, farming Jade. Uh, doing some some farming, I think. Running back and forth there. Uh, what are they called? Jade Brotherhood farm. Uh, I can actually go back and turn in my tome or my what do you call it? Book. And let's see. I picked it up from the Luxon Bard, but does that mean I have to turn it back into the Luxon Bard? I hope not. What happens if I talk to the Kurzic poet? Written evidence. Yeah, okay, so I can just turn it in here if I want. And I think I'm gonna do that because I kind of already ruined my reputation of Lux and I already got it down. Plus, I'm ally of the Kursic 4. If I can get this up, I don't think this will do it. But if I can get it up, I will uh, improve the ability, the PvE ability that I got friend of the Kursic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Plus, I'll get some gold, I believe. Whoa, it's more than I thought. 40,000 points kursic points that'll get me a lot um four thousand gold forty thousand experience so yes take the book look at that oh it's just i thought it was faction it's just it's just this these points that's kind of lame yeah i got four platinum so i'm pretty wealthy right now 14 14 platinum um also I could sell some stuff. Oh, I could salvage stuff really quick. Hold on, let me let me organize my my uh, equipment here real quick. Okay. And now let's go back to marketplace. So I got more Kursic points. Kind of dropping some. What's the term? Dropping the bucket. It's like I I don't even really notice an increase there. But either way, level four there. I think it was a smart move putting it there. Now I'm running my favorite illusionary weaponry build minus the bestial fury. I wish I could replace that, but it's my best ranger uh attack speed increase that i have while well, letting me have a pet let's grab our hint cheese i probably don't even need them so i'm just gonna grab random ones that sounds good i see still farming i caught him on the second round pretty good farm here actually uh this is not the right way not the right way at all i need to go Caning docks, yeah. People might remember this area from uh, Guild Wars 2. Like this whole area in Guild Wars 2, this is where you enter. Uh, and you go from Xingjie Island in End of Dragons, I think. And then you come up here. These are the docks. They kept the same layout. I thought they did a really good job with End of Dragons. I never, I never finished it, actually. Uh, I didn't play much Guild Wars 2, but I did I did pop in a little bit to see how they did Cantha for End of Dragons. And it was I thought they did a pretty good job. What did you think, Guild Wars 2 players, who were also Guild Wars 1 players, how do you think, how do you feel about their representation of Cantha compared to Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2? Um, who do I talk to? First mate, this guy, can he take me? Yeah. Look, <laughs> in red, in red color. Warning, there is not much to do in Xingjie for visiting foreigners. Yeah, this is going to be a relaxed episode. I should be able to do the missions, I believe. Yeah, so you can just come here and explore a little bit. You can get some Cantha uh, exploration points. What is my Cantha exploration at? It's at... 42%, so maybe that'll go up. Yeah, 42.8, so I get a little bit of exploration by coming here. 
Yeah, so this is Seitung Harbor. This is the... Another area people might remember in factions. You come here. This is where you enter, I think. I think you can fight a Leviathan over there in Guild Wars 2, I believe. They did a pretty good job. I should do like a side-by-side -side video comparison of Guild Wars 1 versus Guild Wars 2 uh, layout. This would be a nice screenshot. Hold up. Okay, I got my screenshot. What I want to do in Kanta this episode is I want to try and get to the missions. Can I? I can do the missions, right, as a foreigner? hope so i really hope so so like there's armor vendors here i can't even i can't buy any of the armor vendors i don't think because i'm not oh i can okay yeah they have mesmer armor vendors it's cool i really like the canton armor i wish i could get it as max here uh can i leave this way no i can't IG Lagoon for permission to gain entrance. Yeah, honestly, I've never come here as a Prophecies player. I'm kind of lost here. Let me try and figure some stuff out. Go ahead and grab my henchman while I'm running past. Go. I can go up here. Jaya Bluffs. Honestly, I have no idea where I'm going. I was hoping to make it back to the monastery. <laughs> There's really nothing for me to do here. Okay, I I tried going up the Jaya Bluffs way, and I think it's the wrong way. I need to go through Baoshang Trail. I think if I backtrack through here, I should be able to get to the monastery. That's where I want to start off. And then from there, I can do the missions, I believe. We'll see. I think so. I hope so. We're finding this out together. I'm just gonna speed through here. These are all like super low level. My henchmen should be able to just clean it up. And if not, I can one shot some enemies. Yeah. My my tiger does quite a bit. I've never come I've never gone through this way backwards. Usually your uh factions players come down this path with Togo. After completing the first mission. I'm not a factious player. We'll see if I'm even allowed into the... Into the Xingjie Monastery. I really love the level design of factions. Like, just from the beginning, Xingjie Island is just so nostalgic for me. Picking anything up. It's all garbage. I'm rich now. I got 14k. Pick up the gold. It's like one or two golds divided. Ooh, 26 gold. All right, mantids. I didn't fight many mantids in profit or in factions. There's some areas that are pretty heavy with mantids in Caning City, but I didn't really see much of them, I don't think. Here it is, Lennox Courtyard. Isn't this... Is this where the tutorial starts? No, it doesn't. 
Does it? Linux courtyard, so this goes into... I can enter, perfect. This enters... This is the entrance into... Um, factions beginning. Hope you're visiting, enjoy visiting Xingqiu Monastery. I welcome you as a guest, if not a pot as a potential student. There was a time long ago when foreigners could train here, but the ascendant Emperor Kisu has in his wisdom wisdom prohibited the passing on our of our secrets to foreign powers. I will not go against the dictates of the Emperor. No true Canton ever would. You are welcome to look around, however, perhaps spend some time in meditation. That was convenient. So they conveniently made this place close to foreigners by the Emperor. That would be cool if there were some side quests or something. Like, uh, if it, it would be cool if they did it for if they added to prophecies for pre searing characters the option of taking a boat or caravan or something to Cantha at the beginning. So even though you created a prophecies character, you would have the option of going on to factions or prophecies. I don't know why they would do that, but <laughs> that's just something popped in my head. Here we go, Xingjie Monastery. And it looks like we missed the... I was a bit late. We missed the... Uh... Dragon Festival, that's what I'm trying to think of. But yeah, this is Xingjie Monastery. It looks very cool. Music is nice. Very calm, peaceful, relaxing. Very Buddhist... Buddhist temple vibes going on here. So now, I should be able to run... I'm going to bring a running skill. I should be able to run to... Um, the next mission area. I'm not going to bring any henchmen because they're level 3. No reason to do so. Originally, I thought about making a new prophecies or a factions character rather to showcase this beginning of factions, but I still might do that later on. Who knows? But this playthrough is from the perspective of my Mesmer. I do plan to do that with my uh, Nightfall character, however. Whenever I go to Nightfall, I'm thinking about, at some point, either at the beginning of my Nightfall playthrough, creating and starting a Dervish to go through the uh, Istan, or at the end of my Nightfall playthrough with my Mesmer, going back and creating a dervish to do that um i might make a poll for that and see what you guys think or if you're watching this video and you want to comment and go ahead and vote right now on these comments should i when i go to when i go to nightfall pretty soon should i a just play through it with my mesmer and skip the istani uh training area or b make a dervish and do the Istan prelude before continuing on with my Mesmer. Or see something else. Maybe maybe some people still want me to go up to Eye of the North. That's not impossible. I could possibly do that. So here is the first mission. We're going to be running through it solo with my pet. Because why not? I might bring a healer, actually, just to keep Togo alive. Let's bring... Kaya. Yeah, so I can intermission here. Your party has ch characters from another campaign. Yeah, that's me. Me going in through here. There's no one to talk to. No quest for us. No information about... Where'd my sound go? Do I not have any sound? Okay. 
uh, no information about the storyline at all, but this is like a this mission was to serve as a training for like teaching factions players how to how to properly go through a mission with a party. So so Tojo is kind of talking us through like this is an enemy. You're about to relive the events as they occurred on Xingche Island prior to your arrival in Kanang City. That's cool they give you that that warning. They did the same thing with some content in Guild Wars 2, I think. Whenever they added it later and let it they let players go back and re-experience it. Isn't it true we can call out our targets by holding down control? I saw hold control and double click one of the sickened guards. Hey, I did it. Yeah. 84 damage because they're running frenzy. I think I can't run too fast through this mission because we need to stay with Ogo and Yiju. My, um, my tiger does some pretty decent damage. Again, by doing this, I'm getting a lot of... See, I started with 43. I think I'm up to 45. I already got 2% of Kantha exploration points here. So there is a point of coming here as a Prophecies player if you are looking to complete these exploration um thingies exploration titles why is he telling me to go up there we will group up group up near that tree do you see how i indicated oh i can do that too you can also draw something on them <laughs> okay <laughs> be funny if togo teaches players how to do that also if you notice you can draw on the mini map and then you... <laughs> okay he just draws the obligatory item that we all drew as kids when we first played this game <laughs> uh, uh... i hold i can draw on the map how very useful Let's go. Oh, they went on without me. What the heck? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, Togo is level 20. I shouldn't have been worried about him. He can probably even handle this. He could solo this place. My illusion of pace. Load me down there. And I think I can, like, another reason to do this is you get gold and experience for running these, so. When I have heroes, I probably want to come here and run it in a hard mode with some heroes, but I'm, it's probably not smart to do it with henchmen because they were, my henchmen would stay level 6 while all the enemies go up to level 20. So I don't think I could solo this. In hard mode. Of course, you do have Togo. And maybe Yijo goes up to level 20 as well. That would be... That would make sense. With such a large force, it's best to keep your distance and see if they will separate, giving you a better opportunity. So it's teaching you, like, how to be patient. Which, as I talked about in a different episode, is... In factions, it's actually encouraged not to use any of these tactics that they're teaching you. Because you want to get that master's bonus. Again, I'm I'm I didn't really enjoy that. Okay, purple axe, I'll pick that up. Mammoth axe. 
Mammoth Axe looks pretty cool. Look at that. That's a cool looking axe. Let's see what's on it. Nope, not good. Bleeding duration. Like, axe skills, as far as I know, there's not many axe skills that even in that even cause bleeding. Are there? There must be at least one or two. Oh, I used clumsiness on 194 damage. Serpent Axe. Just skip that enemy. Nope, never mind. Togo, he's over here teaching his tactics and he's like, let's just kill everyone. There we go. He waited the perfect amount of time before clumsiness wore off. Interesting. I think this is the end. I think there's a little boss here. Afflicted Horror. He's gonna tell us. That creature is no normal flow. I can see a glowing aura of power around it. You feed such opponent, death will provide morale boost. Okay. I got it. I got it. It's interesting that they didn't do any of this in prophecies as far as I remember. They do kind of a, a practice mission with Rurik in the end of pre-searing, but I don't remember him going into detail about all this stuff. It's very short in pre-searing. Honestly, I feel like this one should be about that length too. Is this a training mission after all? Oh, no, this is not the end yet. We got to go through his menagerie. He's got all these canthan or these prophecies, uh, animals that we're supposed to feel very nostalgic for. The canthans, these are all very... I got the warning. These are all very exotic, but anyone who came from prophecies would know that these... Are very common creatures in Tyria. Fun fact, Tyria is the name of the world in which Guild Wars is in, and it's also the name of the continent where uh, Prophecies is takes place. That would be like, yeah, naming the con naming uh, the if if the Earth were named like Europe. Or Africa or something. Or Amer or North America. Oh, why are they all the way up here? Kind of weird to name the world and a continent the same name. But it's probably, if I'm guessing, it's probably because they were probably unsure about when they first designed the game. They just called it all Tyria. And then, after the, the success of Prophecies, they got, they decided to keep making the other campaigns. And they're like, well, we can't go back and change the name of the continent to something else. We'd have to go through all the uh, lore and published books and manuals and everything saying that this is the world of Tyria. 
and the continent of Tyria or whatever. So they just did what they did, I guess. That's my theory. What is your theory? Purple Earth Wand. What do you got for me? 8%. Garbage. It's worth 16 gold. What is that? It's interesting. I think the higher level you are compared to the enemies you're fighting increases the chances of rarity. Because this is two purple drops in one in one mission. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Um, I was I kinda wanted to run to help that lost boy, but I have a feeling that Togo and Yiju are just gonna come up this way. Okay, yeah. Hold on. Wait, boy. Ooh, Breath of Fire. That's a good one. Anyone play Breath of Fire on Super Nintendo back in the day? Very good game. I guess this lost boy is immune to the uh, disease. And yep, they're gonna run on without us, so I'm not gonna fight these guys. I could send my pet. Did he go? Hopefully Yiju doesn't die. Yeah, Yiju Tan must survive. Duskblade? What is that? Oh yeah, that's a cool sword. I like the look of that sword too. Okay, Minister Cho, we're here to save you. Surely nothing's wrong with you. Let's see. just take him out as soon as he gets taken out whoa it looks cool up close like this as soon as we take him out we finish the mission i think here we go what if we got masters cross your fingers of everlasting paradise. Rest easy in the mists, my old friend. Come out, little one. It is all right. You're safe now. <laughs> Still oh, you know who I am. Un unending battle behind going on. Ah. You are a very smart little boy. But tell me, what brings you tears? I had a bad dream. A bad dream? Tell me what sort of dream could cause such tears. The wind blew the leaves from the trees. And the animals in the zoo they became scared. The animals. They were they were always very tame. Something in my dream made them angry, and they started hurting everyone. Then the people got angry too, and they started to hurt each other. Mr. Cho, he, he was a 
most angry of all. And, and, and he turned into a big angry monster. Where are your parents, little one? My mother died when I was very young. I do not remember her. And your father? He is guarding the gate. Mr. Togo, you do not think he will be angry like Minister Cho, do you? No, little one. I do not think he will be angry at all. In fact, I think he'll be very happy when he sees you. He is still fighting. little friend him and get back to his father. Go find Ang the Ephemeral and tell him what we have found here. <laughs> I think I saw this cutscene once and then afterwards I always skipped it. This is a pretty cool cutscene, honestly. It's funny how, like, this cutscene feels brand new to me because I actually only saw it one time. Wow, my tiger is just running away. What's the point of all this part of the cutscene now? There it goes. 13 minutes, 21 seconds, did we get... Yes, we got the Masters. So, there's no reward, I don't think. Usually it tells you, like, you got experience and gold. I don't think I got anything. Interesting. So, you don't get any... You don't get any gold or experience for beating... For doing the missions in factions. That's so weird. Okay. Well, anyway, that was uh, the first mission of Xingjie Island, Minister Cho's estate. I guess the next episode, I'll try and knock out the next two missions. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll make it. I'll make it a little short mini series. Anyway, if you like this, leave a like and subscribe. Pretty soon, we're gonna be coming to Nightfall. So like I said before, if you want to leave a comment below and tell me exactly how you prefer I go to Nightfall, whether it's start a new character and play through Istani or or make a whole new character and go all the way through Nightfall as that character. I don't mind doing that. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of, uh, you know, attached to my character of my Mesmer here. So I'm leaning towards playing through Nightfall as this guy. After finishing Nightfall, creating a character to do Istani. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm leaning towards doing. But yeah, make your comment, your opinion heard in the comments below. And yeah, if, if, if enough people like it or if it sounds good, I might follow your advice. So I'll stop the video here and I'll see you next time. Bye.